Hi, my name is Ryan Boyd, and today we're here to talk about ducky data crunching on the laptop and how the pendulum is swinging between centralized and distributed compute. Let's first talk about centralized compute. For those of you who were around back in the 1940s to 1970s, we had mainframe computers. You could use these if you were at a large company or a wealthy enough academic institution. You could wait in line with your program punch card deck and data cards and request execution from the operator, wait for the result and iterate with the iterations taking you know, an hour or two at minimum. Uh, and these were, were really popular because they introduced computing to the world. We finally had machines that could run our analyses. But they came along with both some good and bad parts. On the bad side, they were bulky and expensive and not very personalized. But then came the PC in the 1980s. These really popularized computing because they were dedicated and personalized. You could run your programs whenever you wanted, and you didn't need to worry about the work of others impacting yours. The cloud data warehouse is the modern day mainframe. It's a shared environment configured to work best for the operators and the average user. It's not really personalized for you as an individual. Yet, as I'm sitting here, I have a supercomputer of a laptop that's relegated to handling a few Chrome tabs and otherwise sitting 80 some odd percent idle. So how do we take advantage of that compute for large scale analytics? That would be just Ducky, wouldn't it? Enter DuckDB. DuckDB is an in-process SQL-based OLAP database management system. What does that mean? Let's break it down. It runs inside Python, R, C++, et cetera, it's a library, but it has no external dependencies. It's for OLAP, online analytical processing, uh, which is the opposite of transactional processing. So OLAP is really about running analytics. Transactional processing is really about storing data um, and using it for applications. And because we have full SQL support and high performance aggregations, it works really well for this OLAP use case. Importantly, it provides simplified data access at very high performance. Although it's built in process, it provides a command line client that can live query from CSVs, Parquet files, and whether they're local or on S3. You can even read Postgres and SQLite tables while they're running and do complex OLAP queries that will often perform faster than Postgres and SQLite natively. And for those web geeks out there building web applications, DuckDB even provides an in-browser ability to execute your queries. This uses WASM or WebAssembly. So super simplified way of getting access to your data and super fast. How is it fast? Well, let's talk about the different type of database engines. Row-based engines are great for transactional workloads, as it's very easy to insert new data. Low memory is used for analytics because you need to read each row at a time and only a row at a time. But that also kills performance, because a lot of analytics queries only access one or two columns uh, and don't need all of the, the other data in the other columns. So enter the columnar databases. The columnar database engines are much better for analytics as you can process only the specific needed columns, uh, but it can be pretty high in memory usage if you're processing an entire column at a time in a very large data set. So enter the vector-based engines. Uh, so vectorized columnar engines like DuckDB take little chunks of the data at a time and allow you to analyze those little chunks. Um, and this is really important because of the way that modern CPUs are designed. Modern CPUs have things called L1 caches, L2 caches, L3 caches that are separate from our main memory. And these caches are having an increasing uh, latency and you know, decreasing uh, closeness to the CPU core. So if we can fit more of our data in the location that's really close to our CPU cores that we can access it a lot faster. 
Uh, and that's really what happens with DuckDB as you run your queries, uh, your data sits very, very close to the CPU core. Uh, and even what can happen here is using a functionality on modern day processors called SIMD is simultaneous instruction for multiple data. So you can process multiple of those vectors at the same time. So DuckDB is really like the SQL-like SQL -like for analytics. SQLite has gained massive popularity because of its in-process architecture and its ability to handle transactional data in that way, whereas DuckDB is getting to be very popular for its ability to do analytics. So here's a wonderful uh, tweet. The irony of life. I've never done a query on a billion row table, but when I did, it was on my laptop using an in-process database, DuckDB. And then someone who retweeted that tweet and said, the vast majority of orgs in the world do not have billion row data sets, but many need the benefits of data. That's why this person is excited about DuckDB, because it provides the power of a cloud data warehouse without the complexity, small data for all. But what is the definition of small data or big data? It really changes depending on who you are and what your perception is. This person thinks that DuckDB only handles small data, but uh, that's all relative. So I actually did some queries here. I downloaded 1.45 billion rows of New York City taxi trip data. And uh, while this used to be published in CSV, it's now in Parquet format, about 20 gigs of data files. And we're gonna show you what that looks like in DuckDB. The first query that I'm gonna show you here is using the command line. We query from the parquets of the taxi data from 2010 to present using a glob pattern to, to specify the files that we wanna access and saying we wanna find the average trip distance. This query only took 2.95 seconds to query 1.45 billion rows, and that is without any indexes. And remember again, this is on my laptop. Now, what if we loaded this data into a native DuckDB database on my laptop? We can get down to 1.47 seconds to compute the average trip distance across these 1.45 billion taxi trips. So, you know, it's super, super powerful, even on a laptop sized computer. But what if we are running it on a beefier machine? We can actually get down to 0.145 seconds. So we're really showing that scale up nowadays can be much more powerful and less complex than a scale out uh, architecture because you don't have all that communication overhead and complexity. Now, also about ease, not on the ease of, of implementation of the architecture, but on ease of working with your data. If you're a data scientist, uh, you often work with pandas data frames as a very fast way to analyze data. DuckDB can be much faster and allow you to use SQL queries. It provides an easy way to take a data frame and join it against other DuckDB data and get the result back as a data frame. So DuckDB can be both simple and extremely efficient and fast. So now that I've talked a little bit about DuckDB, let me say a little about Mother Duck and what we're building. We don't have a product yet, but we're building a serverless DuckDB that allows your laptop supercomputer to work in concert with the cloud. We believe that scale out is expensive and slow and we should scale up. We believe that big data is dead and long live easy data. We believe that your laptop is faster than your data warehouse. So why should you wait for the cloud? And we believe DuckDB slaps, so let's supercharge it. Here's a couple questions that we're trying to answer. Can big machines handle most workloads, eliminating the need for the complexities of distributed compute? Can cloud collaboration capabilities augment local on the desktop usage of DuckDB? Can query plans decide whether to bring the compute to the data or the data to the compute? And what can we give back to the DuckDB community and open source project to make it better? That's the end. And my name is Ryan Boyd. I'm a co-founder at Mother Duck, and you can reach me on Twitter.